This is a revision video about the GCSE chemistry topic of fractional distillation, which comes up in the organic chemistry unit of AQA GCSE combined science and GCSE chemistry. By the end of this video, you should be able to name some fractions of crude oil and state some uses for them. You should be able to describe how the fractions of crude oil differ in terms of their colour, viscosity, flammability, boiling point and chain length, and you should be able to describe how crude oil can be separated into fractions. Crude oil is an unrefined fossil fuel. It's a finite resource found trapped within rocks and it was formed from the remains of ancient biomass, as sea creatures died millions of years ago and their bodies were buried in sediment and then slowly broke down. Crude oil is a mixture of compounds called hydrocarbons, mainly of a class called alkanes. These different alkanes are useful as fuels like diesel and petrol and as feedstocks, which are raw materials used to supply industrial processes. They're used to make solvents, lubricants, detergents, and also polymers like polyethene. Crude oil can be separated into various different fractions, including liquefied petroleum gases or refinery gases, petrol, naphtha, kerosene, which is used as jet fuel, as well as a fuel in people's homes, diesel, lubricating oils, fuel oils, and bitumen or residue. The vast majority of these are used as fuels, and the particular fraction that's chosen as a fuel will depend upon the requirements in terms of both the energy density and how cleanly it needs to burn. In addition to this, there are some other uses. For instance, lubricating oils are used to make petroleum-based products, including cosmetics and also lubricants and even laxatives, while bitumen or residue is used to make tarmac and cover roads. The different fractions of crude oil vary based on the size of the molecules but each fraction is still a mixture of different compounds. Whereas crude oil may contain tens or maybe even hundreds of different molecules, each fraction will contain just a handful, but it's still not one pure compound. Each fraction contains molecules of different sizes. So while the petrol fraction contains molecules with between five and 10 carbon atoms, like pentane, hexane, octane, and decane, molecules in the diesel fraction may contain carbon chains up to 20 atoms long. The size of these molecules influences their physical properties, and this means that the different fractions can be quite different to each other. Smaller molecules have weaker intermolecular forces between the molecules, and this leads them to have lower boiling points, because the weak intermolecular forces require less energy to overcome. In addition, the smaller molecules collected at the top of the fractionating column have lower viscosity, Viscosity is a measure of how easy to pour and sticky something is. So golden syrup is an example of a very viscous liquid, whereas water has very low viscosity. The smaller fractions are also more flammable and they burn with a cleaner, less smoky flame. So this makes them better fuels. The smaller molecules are also paler in color. Petrol, which is quite a small fraction, is more or less colorless. Whereas, well, you've seen tarmac, and that's made out of bitumen or residue, which is the fraction with the largest molecules in it. Time for a quick progress check. Pause the video and see if you can fill in the gaps in these five sentences. Crude oil is a mixture of different molecules, and most of these are a type of hydrocarbon called an alkane. The smallest molecules have the weakest intermolecular forces, and this means that their boiling points are much lower. The largest molecules make poor fuels because they burn with a very smoky flame and are less flammable. The different fractions that make up crude oil can be separated according to a process called fractional distillation. This takes place in a piece of apparatus called a fractionating column. Fractional distillation separates liquids according to the temperature at which they evaporate and condense, their boiling point. It uses the processes of evaporation and condensation and it's able to occur because there's a temperature gradient. In other words, it's very hot at the bottom of the fractionating column near to the heat source and much cooler further away. At the base of the fractionating column, the mixture of liquids is all heated until the vast majority of molecules evaporate. What's left behind is the bitumen or residue. As the gases evaporate, they rise up the column and as they rise, the temperature cools. As each different molecule reaches the location that corresponds to its boiling point, it will condense back into a liquid, and this allows it to be separated and tapped off. Describing this process regularly comes up as a question, worth between three and six marks, depending on where in the paper it comes and whether this is the foundation tier paper or the higher tier paper, but it's usually worth about four marks. So to finish off, 
pause the video and see if you can write down some bullet points describing how crude oil can be separated into fractions. The first part of the process is that the crude oil is heated, usually to between 350 and 400 degrees C. At these high temperatures, almost all of the molecules will evaporate, just leaving behind the bitumen or residue. Within the fractionating column, it's hot at the bottom and cooler at the top, what we call a temperature gradient. In some instances, the words fractionating column will get you a mark, but not always. Because the molecules have got different boiling points, they condense at different locations according to this. Again, sometimes you get a separate mark for talking about boiling points, but you will always get a mark for talking about condensing. Finally, if the question hasn't used the term, you may also get a mark for naming this as fractional distillation. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found this a useful summary of this GCSE organic chemistry topic. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe, and if there are other topics that you would like me to cover, don't forget to let me know in the comments below.